One of the most high-profile political moderates in America set off shockwaves today with the sudden announcement that he will not be seeking re-election in the Senate next fall. In a video posted to social media, Democratic West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin shared his plans to step away from the Senate after nearly 15 years. Of course, now it has many asking whether this could be a first step in a presidential bid and what that could mean for the race. After months of deliberation and long conversation with my family, I believe in my heart of hearts that I have accomplished what I set out to do for West Virginia. I have made one of the toughest decisions of my life and decided that I will not be running for re-election to the United States Senate. Now, if you're part of the group that I call the marginalized moderate majority, you might consider this a dark day. Joe Manchin has been a great champion for political moderation. He's a Democrat who won two Senate elections in deep red West Virginia. Few political leaders better understand the art of compromise, the importance of bipartisan governing. The United States Senate will be worse off without him, at least for moderates. But before you think you've seen the last of Joe Manchin, there's another part of the senator's announcement today where he seemed to make it clear he's not done. What I will be doing is traveling the country and speaking out to see if there is an interest in creating a movement to mobilize the middle and bring Americans together. Public service has and continues to drive me every day. That is the vow that I made to my father over 40 years ago, and I intend to keep that vow until my dying day. That doesn't sound like a guy who's finished with politics. Sounds like a guy who might be gearing up for a run for president. Political leader traveling the country ahead of an election year? Even earlier on, on CNBC, Manchin sounded like a guy very much thinking about a presidential run. This is, this is right before he made this announcement, talking up the possibility of a third-party candidate. The people haven't been able to speak yet. The party, basically the Democrat and Republican Party, might be set on where they're going and who they think is going to be the representative, but the people haven't spoken up yet. If the middle ever would cohese around and basically say we want someone that can take us into the future. Fiscal responsibility is one thing, opportunity is another, inflation, all the things that we're fighting, energy security, border security, all of these things here. They're going to have to find basically someone can bring people together. And if that's not what's happening and what's being produced, then the people will go differently. The centrist group No Labels has been shopping for a moderate presidential candidate to run in 2024. Joe Manchin could certainly fit the bill. In a statement reacting to the senator's announcement, the group said, quote, Senator Joe Manchin is a tireless voice for America's common sense majority and a longtime ally of the No Labels movement. The Senate will lose a great leader when he leaves. We commend the senator for stepping up to lead a long overdue national conversation about solving America's biggest challenges. With voters on both sides of the aisle dissatisfied with a potential Biden Trump rematch next fall, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s strong performance in recent polls shows many Americans are more than open to a third party candidate. Joining us now is Jessica Taylor, Senate and Governor's Editor for the Cook Political Report, who has been tracking Manchin's potential plans closely. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. What is the betting among the insiders? Is he running? He certainly did not sound like, as you said, a man finished with politics. And really, in the past few months, he seemed like someone more interested in a nationalized role than one focused just on West Virginia. So from my standpoint, looking at Senate races, I was not surprised by any means that he did not run for re-election to the Senate. And that abs that actually will more like all but surely hand that seat to Republicans. Um, but if he's looking for a bigger platform, I think a place like No Labels is there with open arms and encouraging him. Um, but it's still our system of government is still dominated by the two parties. Right. And well, it, let me ask you this, then follow, it's a following very up, difficult task. Following up on mm -hmm. that thought, is there any chance he could run in the Democratic primary? He's very good friends with Joe Biden, and so that's what gives me a little pause about... He's been critical of him, sure, but ultimately, would he do that? I think he's a man that feels like the Democratic Party has left him. Mm. And so is he at home in that? And would he have a chance, I think, in the way the Democratic Party is? I don't think he would. If he wants a viable path forward, 
probably something to stay in there, you know, past March or April, then probably this no labels path gives him the best way to right. do that. So let me ask you about that, all right? Because I keep hearing everyone saying uh, that it would be a disaster for President Biden if Manchin were to run in the no labels party. Mm -hmm. But initially, that's what many were saying about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as well. And now it's looking like he actually may be taking more voters from Trump uh, than from Biden. Um, what is your take on how Manchin in the race could or would impact it? I think there is a real risk that it could take uh, from Biden, but we have to remember it's not this. All of this isn't happening. It's not would not just be a three way race, like you said. You have Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in there, and I do think he has the potential to take more from Trump, which we've seen in some polling. But we also had today that former Green Party candidate Jill Stein announced that she's running again. Uh, Cornell West has said that he is going to uh, run also as an independent, um, and those. Three there have, I think, the potential to take votes away from, from Biden. But I think all of this is borne by just a deep unsatisfaction by the choices that are no given. Doubt. What we've seen in the recent polling is that a, a strong majority of voters don't want either candidate. I remember listening to a lot of focus groups in 2022 of voters that had voted for Trump in 2016 and flipped to Biden in 2020. The overarching thing I heard, I don't think there was one single person in any of those focus groups that wanted a rematch between Trump right. and Biden. And yet, right. what are we staring down? A rematch between Trump and Biden. Yep. But the reality may be with these third party fourth party, fifth party candidates, uh, that there is going to be an impact one way or the other on uh, the ultimate race between Biden and Trump as well. Jessica Taylor, thank you very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.